Hey students, this is Mr. Pickett, and here's part two of our little mini lecture talking about kinetic energy. So uh, last time we talked, we talked about potential energy or potential for energy, and we learned that gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times gravity or the acceleration due to gravity times the height of the object, how far it is away from the ground. Right. And um, measuring something in potential energy or gravitational potential energy, that unit that we use for that is joules. When we start looking at another form of energy rather than gravitational potential energy, well, we kind of have to think about that skate part that you guys kind of work through. So when an object was really, really, really high up in the air, um, relatively to a lot of the other energies, that was a, a, a really, really large number for uh, gravitational potential energy or potential energy. But as the objects started to fall, you would probably have noticed that the gravitational potential energy also dropped. Something had to take its place because um, another law of conservation is the conservation of energy. Can't destroy it. It can only change forms. So if we are losing gravitational potential energy, well, then it's got to be turning into a different form of energy. So there's really a couple different options, but the one that we're going to talk about today is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is usually pretty easy to understand. Uh, the word kinetic is um, movement in some way, shape, or form. So if an object is in motion, then it's probably going to be possessing some kinetic energy. It's a, um, it's a, it's a fairly straightforward concept. The equation is a, a little bit more challenging than mass times gravity times height but it's, uh, it's in the same family. So if I have an object that starts really, really high up in the air, not moving, it's got no kinetic energy because it's not moving, but it will start to gain potential energy as, excuse me, gain kinetic energy as it starts to drop. And it's gaining that kinetic energy at the expense of its gravitational potential energy. So kinetic energy, what's the formula? Well, um, as we take a look at it, it is um, one half, times mass, times, I need to put that symbol in there, times velocity, and that velocity is being squared. And I don't know if I can actually write the squared word or the squared symbol up here, so I'm gonna write squared. So it's one half mv squared. So as I'm looking at Ke, or the kinetic energy of a, of an object is equal to one half times mass times velocity squared. So this is a, a little bit more challenging of a formula, but you can still plug things in. An object has more kinetic energy if it's bigger, and it has a lot more kinetic energy if it's faster. Um, we're still measuring, because this is an energy type, we're still measuring kinetic energy in joules. We measure mass in kilograms, and we measure velocities in meters per seconds. Now, some kids like, do you measure it in meters per second squared? No, you do not. It's just a meter per second times a meter per second. So don't worry about that. Um, as we're taking a look at kinetic energy, right? Yeah, kinetic energy has to come from something. Either something has to bump into it, um, or an object happens to be really, really, really high up in the air, and it's starting to fall and its gravitational potential energy will start turning into kinetic energy. Um, looking at a couple of these things on here. This is good, this is good. I think you guys should be able to crush this. Probably the only issue that you guys are gonna have is if maybe you're gonna solve um, for like maybe V and uh, you, you, you end up getting an equation um, and I'll just plug in some numbers here. Uh, let's put in text. Maybe you know the kinetic energy is 100 and that your mass is also 100, so half times 100 is 50, and you're gonna multiply that by V, and then that V needs to be squared. I have students that struggle with, okay, I can solve this, I can divide each side by 50, so I get two is equal to V squared. So what do I do here, Mr. Pickett? How do I get rid of the, um, the V that's being squared? Well, you square root, the value. So I would square root the V squared. So I square root it. It's supposed to be V still in here. And that's going to get rid of the square. 
and then I have to square root the other side. Now, I don't know what two squared, um, uh, the square root of two is, excuse me, off the top of my head, but that's your answer. Your answer is going to be whatever the calculator tells you that the square root of two is. So that's probably the only math that's on here that I don't know if you guys have seen yet. So hopefully this helps you guys understand kinetic energy a little bit better. It's the energy of an object that it possesses while it's in motion. Now, by the way, some of you are like, well, momentum, it's just mass times velocity. Momentum is a slightly different concept, right? Under the same family though, uh, as energy. Okay, I'm going to stop and hit end.